and welcome to this Faros Designer screencast. My name is Liz. As part of the Getting Started series, this tutorial will introduce the plan and basic fixture layout. Typically, when starting a designer project file, you will want to lay out your fixtures on the plan. To do this, we go to the Setup tab. Within this window, you'll find the plan, along with its size and grid settings. Our plans are at a scale of one pixel to one centimeter. Our library of fixtures is very comprehensive. You can see the manufacturers that are represented here. But for today's purposes, we're going to use fixtures from the generic library, where we have generic LED personalities as well as a standard dimmer fixture. To place fixtures on the plan, I simply select them from the library and drag them and drop them onto the space. I now get information about the fixture, including editable fields such as names, comments, its position on the plan and its dimensions. To add additional fixtures I can continue to drag and drop from the library but I also have duplication tools. To get to these I can do a right click or on a Mac would be control click to get to duplicate. To start with let's just create an array of our fixtures with spacings that are suitable. So there you have it, a sequentially numbered array of fixtures. Let's look again at that duplication menu. This time I'm going to add a dimmer and this time create a circle. Let's go for something like a clock face. You can see also that it has arranged the fixtures at a suitable angle for that circle. Should I wish them all to point in the same direction, I could go in here and set them all to zero. This area displays fixture information when fixtures are selected. To get back to the plan settings, I simply need to click in space so no fixtures are selected. Let's take a moment to look at some more of the plan parameters. As well as being able to adjust the width and height of my plan in pixels, I can adjust the grid spacing. This is used both for the snap function, but also for the nudge function. If I select a fixture now, and use the cursor keys, that's being moved at 24 pixel spaces. If I want to make that spacing finer, I can reduce the grid spacing, as you can see. We also have a super nudge if you use the shift and cursor, and then that moves it at 10 times the current grid spacing. So typically I like to work with a smaller grid spacing for more finer control, and at a smaller grid spacing, you might not want to display the grid. We can also include a background colour. This is quite important for simulating later on because the fixtures, as you can see, will stand out much more clearly from a darker background, which is typically how they're going to be viewed in reality. So as you can see, laying out fixtures onto a blank plan is simple and quick. However, more often than not, you're basing your layout on physical constraints of an actual installation. So I'm going to clear the decks now to illustrate what we can do when we're working with imported background images. We can import any JPEG or bitmap. An installation may well have a CAD drawing already available at the point at which you're laying out your plan and it is tempting to use that. However the scale and layout and white space may not necessarily be the most useful way of laying out your fixtures. It's often better to think about it in the abstract to make it easier to visualize. I encourage users to consider whether very simple backgrounds such as ones created in paint would be suitable for their situation. And here's one I created earlier representing a building facade. In this case, the blue lines represent stories of the building and I'm going to have a row of LEDs on each story. So let me take my first fixture and place it on my marker. I want this fixture to be long and thin, like that. I have already determined that these fixtures need to be eight wide and butted up together so I shall leave the spacing at 24 which is the current width of the fixture. I have 18 rows and with a little bit of experimentation I have determined that a pixel height of 18 each should give me 
the uh, correct layout. Phew. Now that was experimentation and we'll talk a lot more about the fact that you don't necessarily lay out your fixtures first time perfectly and experimentation is a good thing and particularly for the purposes of rehearsing this tutorial I went to some effort to make sure that my background image was accurate for that particular array. But now as you can see I have my building and that didn't need a accurate CAD plan. I have a nice sized screen which is going to be good for visualising all the effects that I'm going to play across it. And obviously the bigger the plan, the uh, more important it is that you can visualise well if you're zoomed out looking at the entire project. So I'm going to stop here but in the next screencast we're going to go into more detail about advanced fixture placement. So please join me then. Thank you for your time. Thank <laughs> you.